How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to take a look at our next crypto topic which is going to be dead peer detection. Now ASA does support this out of the gate so we really don't need to spend a whole lot of time going through that. We looked at some debugs and some Wireshark captures and we can see the actual dead peer detection happening. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on this on the iOS side of the house. So we're going to configure this between CSR2 and CSR4. We'll take down that peering. We'll go ahead and get the configuration up and running again. But that's really the, the driver here. We need to be able to detect when a peering goes down and when there's an issue. How quickly do you uh, take down the peering and stuff like that. We're not really going to be dealing too much with high availability. In this case, we just want to get it up and operational and show that it's actually working. So the configuration for this is actually really, really straightforward. It does happen inside of the Ike configuration. So if we were to go to CSR2, and let's do a show crypto ISA essay, we still have our connection to ASA or uh, CSR4. So I'm actually gonna do a clear crypto essay for peer of 41.0.0.4. I wanted to completely take down the, the any VPN connectivity that I have set up with that guy. So if we do show crypto ISA SA, that takes down the SA, then we also need to do a clear crypto ISA camp. And then the connection ID for this guy will be 1005. So we're gonna do that and then show crypto. And after a short period of time, this will go away if we do a show crypto IPsec um IPsec SA peer to 41.0.0.4, it is going to show up. What we will end up doing um, is getting this to, to go away. So we clear crypto IPsec. So we can't do an IPsec. If we do clear IPsec, there is no option. So clear crypto, and we have the, the SA, and we can do per peer and stuff like that if we want to. I'm just going to patiently wait for the this to go away. So that'll happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video, wait till this is done and gone away. Then we'll re go ahead and renegotiate and take a look at exactly how that works. Okay, so our SA to CSR4 has gone away. And if you look at the, the IPsec setup, we do have some specific information when it comes down to the setup that we had before. But if you look at the ESP inbound SA and the outbound ESP SA, we currently don't have one. So that means that we've cleared the, the connectivity for both phase one and for phase two. The next thing that I wanna go do is on these devices, I wanna go to global config and I wanna configure the crypto isocamp keep alive. And we need to specify the number of seconds between the keep alive, we're gonna do the minimum of 10, and then how often do we send it? So I'm gonna say number of seconds between retries if a keep alive fails. So every 10 seconds, it's gonna go, and then do we follow up right away, or do we do it on demand, send DPD messages only as needed, or do we do a periodic where it's continuously sending it? It's almost like a repetitive, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going, so it's up to you and how you want to handle that. I would, you know, recommend you do what you need to do based off of your uh, deployment. Is it, you know, really needed for this thing to be up and running? Then take that into consideration. I'm going to do periodic just because of the fact that I want to have it show up and be consistent. And we're going to hit the enter key. So now I get to go over to the other side. And this will affect the configuration for CSR2 and CSR4. It will not affect CSR2 and CSR5 or CSR2 and CSR6. And the main reason why it won't is because they're not configured for it. And we would have to actually bounce, into, uh, bounce the crypto and bring it back online. It has to be negotiated inside of Ike or Isocamp debugs. You'll see it. So let's go ahead and do a debug crypto ISASA, Isocamp, and we're gonna hit the enter key. So then I'm gonna go back to CSR7 and I'm gonna do a ping to 172.24.0.8 sourcing from loopback zero and we're gonna send the ping out. 
the pin goes out and what we're going to see is after a couple of moments when this is done give that a couple seconds to complete so phase one is now complete we're going to do an undebug all what you're going to see is these are the dpd messages this is the the keep alive we can actually see it right there it's right there happening so we have the keep alive going out and so on and so forth so the keep alive is working and doing its job so if we were to scroll back up here real quick to the top we will see if we as we're coming through here that there is no state it's going through its configurations we found a matching isocamp policy that's set up we're coming back down through and we're seeing messages going back and forth and i believe it's in messages three and four that we should exchange dpd messages and I'm looking for it specifically, and I don't see it showing up. I believe it's three and four. I just don't see it negotiating that. Actually, I wasn't running a debug, or running a Wireshark capture. So it goes back and forth, and stuff like that. So eventually it figures itself out. If I was to do the, enable the debug again, you would see the, the keep alive going out. But this just goes to show you that it is working. Now the other thing we can do is a show crypto session and we do a detail. We're gonna see that the connection to four is going to have a DPD is gonna be enabled. So capabilities, we have D right there. That means it is, actually no it is not. It is not actually enabled at the moment. We look at 11. It is not currently set up or working for whatever reason. Actually, well, it's not showing it's it in the SA. That's the problem. That's where I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, why is it not showing up? Because it should be. So it should show up as D and K. We do a show crypto ISA SA detail. We look at this. So it actually is working right here. Uh, we have the capability right here. It does. It is showing up right there. D stands for dead peer detection. Right there. The only thing we're not doing is a keep alive, and that's. Um, that's just one of those situations where dead peer detection is turned on and I'm not exactly sure where the uh, why the keep alives aren't showing up either because we have keep alives turned on. I'm not sure on that one, but um, we know dead peer detection is working because it's turned on there and in the, the detail here, I believe it says it up here. Yeah, D is dead peer detection, so it is working. So I was incorrect on that earlier. It is operational. There we have capabilities of D. So we do know that it's operational and stuff like that. So as far as I'm concerned, that's as far as we would need to take a look at it. The uh, the other aspect of this would be on ASA. Is if we look at the show run tunnel group, we're going to see that underneath here there is no keep alive configuration. If we go to global config, underneath the tunnel group, IPsec attributes. And underneath here we specify the IV1 and we specify... I'm sorry, the isocamp, we specify um, the keep alive, and we specify a threshold. We're gonna say 10 second threshold, so how often, and then the retry we'll specify is gonna be two, and we'll do that. And then we're gonna go back to uh, CSR2, We'll do that debug again. And then we should see some messages going out. So we have the dead peer detection is being sent out and stuff like that. So we go back to CSR7. 
and I go to 31, 31.0.8, and I ping, that goes out. CSR2 goes through all these all these steps. So we'll give it a second for it to finish out. And what'll end up happening is we should have a slightly different output. So we'll just wait for that to finish out. It does we have DPD messages going out to CSR4 as well. So it can our debugs are gonna get slightly more chatty because now we have uh, keep alive messages being sent back and forth. So if we just do this, we have, let me go ahead and undebug, undebug all. That'll hopefully minimize all that. If we do the SA detail, we can see here, now we have DK. And the reason why we have DK is because one side is doing dead peer detection, the other side is doing keep alives. And if we look at the, uh, the session detail, we'll see that on the connection down to, this is going to ASA1, we see the capabilities of DK. And DK is dead peer detection and keep alives. So if you're running just iOS routers, you're only gonna see D for dead peer detection. If you're running it with iOS and ASA, you're gonna see DNK. So you're gonna to need to have dead peer detection and keep alives will show up. And that's gonna be how that goes. Now, ASA does it out of the gate. And if we look back at ASA1 and we do a show run tunnel group, the command still doesn't show up, right? If we do a show run all tunnel group, and we come down here, we'll see right here that the on the tunnel group default land to land group for IPsec attributes, there is no pre-shared key. We are um, we are defining that underneath the the everything's got a group policy. If we look underneath the default group policy, isocamp keep alive threshold 10 retry 2. That's the command we just typed in. So it's not a default config. If we were to make a modification to this, it would show up in the tunnel group configuration and global config, but it's not showing that up because it's a default config. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Beyond that, that is it for dead peer detection. There's really not much more to it than that. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me on this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.